Hey guys, it's Bubble Tea Productions here and welcome back to my channel. This video I've been working on for well over a year at this point. And by the time I was finally done with the script, it is um, 27 pages long. I originally just had this idea from watching an iceberg about some other topic, I don't remember exactly what. So then I had searched to see if there was an iceberg that already existed, and then I found this one. I originally found this from doll collecting aerialist on Tumblr. However, I don't know if that is the person who originally made it or not, but that is where I found it. I then took that iceberg and rearranged it into the normal iceberg format just so it was easier to kind of look at things. So this is the iceberg that I'm using in this video. Another thing I am going to mention here is, well, I did get a lot of this information from the American Girl wiki. There was also a lot I had to do Google searches and Tumblr searches and things for and there were some things I was unable to find information on. Welly Wishers are a line of 14 and a half inch all vinyl dolls that were introduced in 2016 for the age demographic. It was too old for bitty babies, but also too young for the 18 inch dolls. The line originally consisted of five dolls, Willa, Emerson, Kendall, Ashlyn, and Camille with a sixth doll, Bryant, being released in 2022. These dolls were also, in a way, a replacement for the Biddy Twin line that was retired in the same year the Welly Wishers were released. The Create Your Own line was released in 2017 and allows you to design your own custom doll directly through American Girl. With this line, you could have a custom, one-of-a-kind doll without either customizing it yourself or buying it from someone else who had already customized it. This line was heavily criticized for its high price point of $200 and the limited selection of face molds, skin tones, hair colors, etc. The line has also come under criticism for many hairstyle choices recently being removed. The Best Friend Dolls were a line of dolls created to be the best friends of some of the historical characters. These dolls were designed to be the doll counterparts to the characters from the historical books, although some changes were made that I will get into later. The dolls in this line were Nellie O'Malley, Samantha's best friend who was released in 2004, Elizabeth Cole, Felicity's best friend who was released in 2005, Emily Bennett, Molly's best friend released in 2006, Ivy Ling, Julie's best friend released in 2007, and Ruthie Smithen's Kit's Best Friend released in 2008. Each of these dolls came with a book that tied into the story of their respective friends book series. In 2014, the remaining best friend characters, Ruthie and Ivy, were retired in preparations for the Be Forever rebranding. The American Girl Doll Hospital was a service that began in 1988 that repairs damaged and dirty American Girl dolls. This service does everything from cleaning the dolls to replacing limbs. Dolls can be sent to the doll hospital either through the mail or at American Girl stores. And certain older retired dolls are no longer able to get head replacements, such as Lindsay, who was Girl of the Year in 2001, and certain early Just Like You dolls. After the eye issues that were having on new dolls in 2019 and the Permapanties incident in 2017, free repairs of dolls with these defective parts were offered for a limited time through the doll hospital. The Bitty Baby line was released in 1995, replacing the already existing Our New Baby line, although these two lines were very, very similar. This line of baby dolls was marketed towards children too young for the 18-inch dolls, and they are 15 inches tall with molded and, and painted on hair and non-rotating limbs. While the Our New Baby line was not marketed as being a specific gender, the Bitty Baby dolls are marketed as being girls. The Bitty Baby line and its precursor, Our New Baby, which launched in 1990, remain one of the longest running American girl lines, beaten only by the historical line. The Contemporary line was a collection of three dolls released in 2017 that, just like the rest of the products American Girl released in 2017, we probably all wished was just a fever dream. The characters in this line were Zi Yang, who enjoyed making stop motion videos, Tinny Grant, an as aspiring singer and songwriter, and Logan Everett, Tinny's bandmate and the first boy doll released by American Girl. This line faced backlash for overshadowing the 2017 Girl of the Year, Gabriella, the first African-American Girl of the Year. Each of the dolls were also surrounded with their own controversies and backlash, which will be discussed later in this video. Joss Kendrick, Girl of the Year in 2020, was the first character doll with a hearing impairment and came with a hearing aid. This hearing aid was different from the hearing aids made for the Truly Me dolls, as it did not need a hole to be essentially drilled into the doll's head to attach the hearing aid to. Because of this, Joss not only had a different face mold with 
nightmare fuel stock photos, but also a different ear mold. With the rebranding of the Just Like You line to the My American Girl line came Inner Star University. The online game launched with the rebranding in 2010 and doll codes and star codes that came with each My American Girl doll allowed you to play as your doll in the game. The game was only accessible to its full extent if you had bought a My American Girl doll during this time period. It featured many locations your doll could explore, such as Rising Star Stables, Star Student Center, and U Shine Hall, each with different mini games and activities. The site closed in 2015 when the line was rebranded to Truly Me. When American Girl was founded in 1986, it was called Pleasant Company named for its creator, Pleasant Roland. The brand originally sold three dolls, Kirsten from 1954, Samantha from 1904, and Molly from 1944, under the name The American Girls Collection. These three dolls are all ironically either retired or cubed, or at least they were at the time I wrote the script because Molly was recently re-released. The company was known as Pleasant Company until it was purchased by Mattel in 1998 and was renamed American Girl, the name that was already included in many of its product lines. When Kaya was released in 2002, a new face mold was created for the doll. Kaya was the first Native American doll released by American Girl. Kaya is part of the Nemiapu or Nez Pierce tribe, where it is cult a cultural belief that showing your teeth shows aggression and is disrespectful. Due to this, a new face mold had to be created for this doll, as all other face molds at the time showed the doll's teeth. The new face mold created for Kaya was the only mold with a closed mouth until the introdu introduction of the boy dolls into the Truly Me line, which all had face molds that were modified from other face molds to have a closed mouth. Kaya was the only doll with this face mold until it was used for Logan Everett in 2017, which caused a lot of controversy, which I will discuss later in this video. When I was initially researching for this video, I didn't really know what this was specifically referring to. However, I did find that Connie Porter, the author of Addie's books, stated that she chose not to mention or say the n-word in the books at all, and there is this quote from her of what she had said about it. The bottom line was that the books contained enough tough and visceral truths that using the n-word could have sidetracked parents, educators, and critics to the point that the other projects would not have been viable. Many dolls were released in 1995 as dolls for the American Girl of Today dolls. The line included Felicity, Kirsten, Addie, Samantha, and Molly. You could buy them for $20 each or $90 for the set of five. Josefina was also added to this line after her release in 1997. After American Girl was purchased by Mattel, the mini dolls became a separate line. With this rebrand, the changes that came were painted on eyes and rooted hair, as the dolls had wigged hair and glass eyes prior to this. Many dolls of Kit, Kaya, Julie, Rebecca, Cecile, Marie Grace, and Caroline were added when these dolls were released. Dolls were also made for the best friend dolls when they were released. At the launch of Be Forever, the mini dolls were changed to their new meat outfits, and mini dolls were later made of each of the dolls released during the Be Forever era. A Pleasant Company Molly mini doll was released with Courtney in 2020 to be an accessory for her as she was the historical doll for 1986, the year that American Girl was originally released. In 2011, mini dolls of the historical characters wearing outfits from their collections was released from the 25th anniversary of American Girl. A similar line was released for the 30th anniversary in 2016. Each of the Girl of the Years, starting with Sage and ending with Luciana and Tenny as well, who was a contemporary doll, all had mini dolls. In 2019, six different mini dolls were included with the Smart Girl Girls Guide kits, and in 2021, a mini doll of Truly Me 88 was included in the day at the American Girl Cafe set. Grace Gardner, Cecile Ray, and Caroline Abbott were the most short-lived of the historical dolls. Marie Grace and Cecile were released in 2011 and were set in the New Orleans Yellow Fever epidemic of 1853. They were retired in 2014 with the rebranding of the historical line into Be Forever because with this line, American Girl wanted to dolls were your best friend instead of having best friends, so therefore Marie Grace and Cecile, as well as all of the best friend dolls, were retired. Caroline Abbott was released in 2012 and was set during the War of 1812. Unlike Ruby, Grace, and Cecile, Caroline survived the 2014 rebranding only to be retired a year later in 2015. These dolls remain some of the hardest to find and most expensive dolls on the secondhand market. 
In 2004, American Girl released their first movie, Samantha and American Girl Holiday. After this, a movie was typically released every year with, every year, with Felicity in 2005, Molly in 2006, and Kit in 2008. Starting in 2009, the movies were shifted to a girl of the to the girl of the year line, with movies made for all of the girl of the years from Krissa to Leah, with the exception of Kanani. In 2017, there was no girl of the year movie, most likely due to the high likelihood of Gabriella not being the intended girl of the year, and thus not having time to produce the movie to release in 2017. This theory is reported by stories on American Girl's Instagram in 2016 of filming of a movie which was believed to be about Tenny, who was released in 2017, and who was speculated to be the intended girl of the year for that year. After this, no more girl of the year movies have been made, except for 2022, American Girl has confirmed that a Corinne movie has been in production. Before researching for this video, I had never actually heard of this theory, and all I really found was a YouTube video that sounds like it was made by a 12 year old and this random post on a doll blog. So there's not much support for this theory other than the dolls looking very similar, which in all likelihood was just American Girl being lazy and unoriginal like they always are. I was surprised that this was on the iceberg, but the Marie Grace's Grand Mary theory wasn't because I definitely see that being talked about a lot more. And I will link a post explaining that theory because I don't have time in this video. <laughs> in recent years, the decline in quality within American Girl products has been a big topic of discussion in the doll community. One of the big catalysts in this issue was the perma panties debacle in 2017, which I will get into later. There was also the eye issues in 2018-2019, the lower quality cloth use for bodies and clothes, and the blue gaming chair that stained the dolls. This isn't even just an issue in recent years. The quality has been steadily declining since the early 2000s, and it has just accelerated in the past five or six years. In 2019, when the Be Forever line was changed back to the historical line, the books of the characters who remained in this line were heavily abridged, and these dolls went from having six books to having their stories condensed into two longer books. American Girl then made the decision to cut out not as relevant sections of the books in favor of putting more illustrations in. This led to, once again, a lot of criticism. Gabriella was the Girl of the Year in 2017 and the long-awaited first Black Girl of the Year. American Girl was put under a lot of scrutiny as Gabriella was most likely not intended to be the Girl of the Year and was also a recycled truly me doll. Tinny Grant, a doll from the short-lived contemporary line that was released the same year, has been all but confirmed to be the intended 2017 Girl of the Year. She had a much more fleshed out collection, a companion doll, the only non-historical doll to have had one since Krista in 2009, and was rumored to have had a movie in development that production was quickly ended on after the release of Gabriella. This is a kind of vague term, so I am going to try to cover it the best I can. AGSM stands for American Girl Stop Motion. It is a genre of videos on a G-Tube that gained popularity through the early to mid-2010s and have maintained relevancy to this day. Many popular AGTubers made AGSMs, and it was very popular video format in the community in this time period. In 2015, American Girls started making stop motions on their official YouTube channel, starting with the character Z Gang and later with other characters and dolls. The Pitty Twin line launched in 2003. These dolls were similar in size to Bitty Baby and were supposed to be toddlers. They came in sets of a boy and a girl, however, in 2006, this started to be able to be purchased in any combination of dolls from any of the sets. Originally, only blonde tones were available, but throughout the course of the line, more variations were added. The line was retired in 2016 and was replaced by the Willy Wishers line. Since the beginning of the brand, all the heads on the dolls were held on by a string Spread around the neck and tied at the back of the neck. In 2016, these were replaced with zip ties. <laughs> American Girl did this to comply with international toy testing requirements as they expanded the company outside of North America. This replacement was met with backlash as it made it much more difficult to remove the head. All dolls from 2016 on have had zip ties with the exceptions of the 35th anniversary dolls. 
This is one of the many topics on this chart that are also kind of vague. This is referring to the extremely disproportionate amount of white dolls to dolls of color in most of American Girl's line. American Girl has come under a lot of scrutiny for the abundance of white dolls available while continuing to retire dolls of color while not creating any more. Going to preface this with the following data I took in 2022 before the Truly Me rebrand. So this is not entirely true right now. But however, this still stands because it was true and it continues to be an issue. Of the 39 Truly Me dolls available when I did this, not including the boy dolls, 21 of them are white, while only 6 are black, 4 are Asian, and 7 fall into the category of medium skin tone dolls that don't fall into the other prior categories. There has also been a lot of criticism of how often the classic molds are used. Currently, there are 20 classic molds, 8 Josefina molds, 4 Sonali molds, 3 Addy molds, and 4 Jess molds. There is also criticism of the same issue in the historical line, as out of the currently available characters, almost half of these are white. The white dolls in this line are the only dolls with the expansive collections. In February 2017, it was announced that the Truly Me dolls, Mary Ellen, Melody, Julie, and contemporary characters, including Girl of the Year, would now have permanent underwear as part of the cloth body. The lower half of the doll's torso was made of pale pink fabric that was previously used for the removed wanderer on the dolls and was now not removable. American Girl claimed the change was to continue to provide quality products within price points. Some collectors believe this was due to the company's expansion into conservative Middle Eastern countries. Many thought the change made the body construction quality decrease. There were also concerns that the perma panties showed above the waistline of some outfits. Perma panties were later discontinued not very long after they had initially started and they offered free body replacements through the doll hospital. In the couple of years after this, there was a very large amount of perma panty dolls at the benefit sale as well. The rebranding of the historical line into the Be Forever line in 2014 was one of the most, if not the most, controversial and criticized move American Girl has made. Samantha was really released with this line in August of 2014. This change was highly criticized due to the change in meat outfits, the shortening of the book series from six to two or three books, smaller collections for many characters, and eventual decrease in quality. In preparation for the rebranding, Ivy, Ruthie, Cecile, and Marie Grace were retired. Three dolls were released during the time, Mary Ellen from 1954, Melody from 1964, and Nenea from 1941. Caroline was also retired. A short-lived Costco exclusive re-release of Molly in 2018 was also part of this line, as well as a re-release of Felicity in 2017. This line was rebranded back to the historical line in 2019, retiring Felicity for a second time and adding illustrations to the books again. However, historical collections kept many of the changes made for the Be Forever revamp. The Care and Keeping of You was published in 1998 and was intended to teach girls about your changing body from hair hair to healthy eating, bad breath to bras, periods to pimples, and everything in between. Another book, Care and Keeping of You 2, was released later, intended for a slightly older age range. In modern day, it has been criticized for being outdated and overall not a great puberty book. This iceberg predates the official American Girl podcast, so I will not be going into the details about those here, but there are three official American Girl podcasts, 10-Minute Mysteries, American Girl Fan Club, and the Smart Girls podcast that were released in summer of 2022. I'm not sure what podcast this iceberg it was referencing, however, it is probably the American Girls podcast. In each episode of this podcast, they discuss a different American Girl book. I have not actually listened to this podcast at all, but I have heard a lot of mixed sentiments about this podcast. Some people love it, some people hate it. Some people have heavily criticized it. This is a pretty straightforward, and I don't really know how to go into much detail about this, but Kit Kitteridge, who is the 1930s historical doll's full name is Margaret Mildred Kitteridge. The American Girl magazine was launched in 1992 and was discontinued in 2019. It was released bi-monthly and it was advertised as being both an ad-free magazine for kids and not focusing on making them grow up too fast. In the late 2000s, it however did start featuring more advertisements for American Girl products. The magazine consisted of many different sections, some of which being True Story, which was short all the girls submitted by readers, Shining Stars, about girls who helped make a difference in the world, Art Gallery, where readers submitted photos, drawings, and paintings, and help and advice section. The magazine was discontinued after 27 years, and the last issue was in January-February 2019. 
In 2019, American Girl partnered with Sforzky to make four one-of-a-kind dolls adorned with Sforzky crystals. One of these dolls was the first holiday collector doll, and the other three were auctioned to benefit the First Responders Children's Foundation. In the following year, special edition dolls and ornaments were made available on a much larger scale. In 2020, this included the Sugar Plum Fairy doll, Land with the Sweets ornaments, Boho Chic doll, Fuchsia Feathers doll, and Sweet as a Rose doll. In 2021, there were the Winter Princess dolls and ornaments. These dolls were quickly bought up by scalpers, only for them to find out the hard way that they were nowhere near as popular as they anticipated and wouldn't sell at the high markup that scalpers were selling them at. The Sapphire Splendor doll was released this year and was the first doll other than Nenea to have the Nenea mold. Throughout the history of American Girl, many people have created custom dolls. This would consist of changing the doll's wig, swapping out their eyes, and sometimes even dyeing the entire doll. The release of Logan Everett in 2017 led to both praise and backlash. American Girl released four boy dolls in the True the Me line. These dolls had a few items and outfits released but were later retired. Um, some in 2021 and then the other two in 2022. In 2022, Bryant was added to the Welly Wishers line and two boy dolls were released as a part of the overhaul of the True the Me line. 2016, Mega Constructs, formerly Mega Blocks, partnered with American Girl to release sets focusing on the Truly Me and Girl Dear lines. Wally Wisher and Be Forever sets were later added. All of these sets were retired in 2020, and no more Mega Constructs American Girl sets have been made. Because Tenny was a musician, she had a special modified hand mold to help her be able to hold the guitar pick that comes with her accessories. Logan also had this hand mold in order to hold drumsticks. Silver Eye is a defect that many older American Girl dolls have, in which the decal detaches from the eye, causing the eye to look silver. This happens primarily in older dolls with the pinwheel decal eye. Heat exposure and liquid exposure are the main causes of this. The dolls that most commonly get Silver Eye are Kaya, Kirsten, Addie, Kit, Molly, and just like you, number 3 and 19. Bubble Eye is a variation of Silver Eye that resembles a bubble forming in the eye. This happens to a wider range of dolls. When American Girl was first launched as Pleasant Company, it was mail order only. American Girl was launched in 1986. While the internet did exist then, it wasn't possible to have a website in the scope of what the American Girl website is today with the ability to sell products on it. The American Girl website also wasn't launched until May 1996, which was 10 years later. The first American Girl store didn't open until 1998, so phone and mail order through the catalogs was the only way they could sell dolls in the early days of the company. Williams Sonoma is a kitchen supply company. In 2015, American Girl partnered with Williams Sonoma to release various cooking utensils to coincide with the release of Grace Thomas, Girl of the Year that year, who main part of her storyline was baking. Over the years following, other cooking utensils and cookbooks were released. For every Girl of the Year doll since McKenna in 2012, a free item was given to everyone who came to an American Girl store the day of their release. These items included a duffel bag for McKenna, a doll t-shirt for Sage, Isabel, and Luciana, an apron for Grace and Blair, a sarong for Leah, a boombox notebook for Gabriella, a drawstring bag for Joss, a sling bag for Kira, and a poster and stickers for Corinne. 2017, the Girl of the Year Gabriella and contemporary characters C, Tinny, and Logan's clothes and other items were packaged in weird, our generation-esque plastic packaging. The dolls were also in boxes with clear fronts that had to be opened from the top. Boxes were pretty much universally hated and were retired with these dolls never to be seen again. American Girl Headquarters was moved to Middleton, Wisconsin in 1989. I could not for the life of me find any info on where the headquarters were prior to this. It was announced in January 2022 that American Girl will be moving their corporate office later this year to a new space in Dane County, Wisconsin, and that their warehouses would be combining with other Mattel facilities by June. 
Grin pens were first released in 1994. They could be purchased in packages of 10, and single pens were included with children's clothes. You could also buy a display to put them on. Many Grin pens were also included with doll outfits. There were pens for all 50 states, holidays, animals, food, schools, sports, and many other hobbies and items. These pens were phased out completely by the early 2000s. In recent years, American Girl has released music videos on their YouTube channel about various characters. These videos quickly became infamous for how cursed they are. <laughs> I am sincerely sorry that you had to watch that. In 2009, Gwen Thompson was released as a companion doll to Girl of the Year Krista Maxwell. In Krista's books, Gwen is homeless. Although the doll was intended to teach tolerance and how to stop bullying, she sparked a lot of backlash. The high price point of American Girl dolls, as well as the fact that the doll was not being used to fundraise for the homeless, were the key points that sparked backlash. In recent years, American Girl has used the Girl of the Year line to raise money for various different charities. However, this did not start until 2012. Kanadi's books were the first Girl of the Year books to be written from the third person. Prior to, to this, Girl of the Year books were traditionally written in first person while historical books were in the third person. Kanadi's first book was also the first Girl of the Year book not to be titled The Doll's Name. Mark partnered with American Girl from 2001 to 2005 to make products including special edition books, ornaments, figurines, magnets, snow globes, charms, bookends, bookmarks, cards, stationery, stickers, party supplies, and various other items. Coconut items were also released in this partnership. In addition to the Pleasant Company or American Girl stamp on the back of a doll's neck, some dolls also have a small mark behind their ear. These dolls are usually from early production of that particular doll. Kenna Brooks was the Girl of the Year in 2012. While it was never stated outright in the books or in the movie that she is dyslexic, it is pretty obvious and widely accepted as canon. McKenna was also used as part of an initiative aimed at increasing childhood literacy with Save the Children's U.S. Literacy Program. While researching, I also found this long Amazon review for McKenna's movie, which included the statement about her dyslexia and how it is portrayed. The most glaring errors are regarding McKenna's dyslexia, or what is hinted at as dyslexia. Although the film here faithfully follows the book in that regard, I'm mildly dyslexic, my daughter and many family members a bit more so. To begin, dyslexia is not something that you get over with tutoring, unless your tutor is a highly trained professional in specific methods, like Orton Gillingham. I somehow doubt a middle school girl, Josie, would be. Nor do words fly all over the page as portrayed in the film. That is a much outdated, long disproven myth of dyslexia. As well, or do you read mere images of things? Dyslexia is simply that your mind works differently and processes things differently. You can overcome certain elements. I was always an excellent reader after numerous challenges my daughter now reads several years above her grade level, but it's more through developing coping strategies yourself, not just by working hard, and other aspects you might never get over it. I still tie my shoes the baby way, for example. Ironically, McKenna's athletic ability would have formed the perfect example of the sexiest flip side. Frequently academic shortcomings due to not too intelligent but language processing are offset with creative, technical, many of the sexics by computers unlock everything for them or athletic gifts. I'm not going to read any of the rest of this view, but here it is if you want to pause and read it. Felicity's story takes place in the mid-1770s during the pre-revolutionary war period, 90 years before slavery was abolished in the United States. In her books, Felicity's family owns two enslaved persons, and her grandfather owns a large plantation and several enslaved people. The issue of literally owning people is never brought up in the books, and Felicity finds the plantation to be pleasant and considers her family's enslaved people part of her family. The sanitation of this topic is obviously a huge issue when it's coming from a brand whose whole point is to teach kids about history through the point of view of people their own age. On the flip side, the fact that Felicity's books are written from the point of view of a child in a time period when this was considered completely normal also has to come into play here. When Felicity came out of retirement in 2017, the Choose Your Own Adventure book, Gunpowder and Tea Cakes, My Journey, 
Journey with Felicity was released. The protagonist of this book is a child who time travels to Felicity's time. Slavery is mentioned multiple times throughout the course of this book. The book opens on a scene of a large number of patriots arriving in Williamsburg due to a plot to steal colonists' gunpowder from the magazine. It is later stated by Governor Dunmore that the gunpowder was removed due to rumors of a slave uprising. He then says that he will pay for the, for the taken powder, but that he will arm the slaves and turn them against the owners if any of it is used against his family. Later, when the protagonist is in the Merriman's house, she meets Marcus, one of the enslaved people in their household, and is uncomfortable about them owning this enslaved person. The reader is then given a choice to return to the present or to continue. Online endings to the book include visiting King's Creek Plantation. Depending on the choices the reader makes, Felicity and the protagonist encounter Dinah, an enslaved woman, and her granddaughter Judith, who are trying to nightwalk. Felicity insists on escorting them back to the slave quarters where the protagonist sees the enslaved people dancing and making music. This leads to the protagonist returning to the present the next day, asking her friend Amara about her past as a black child and asking to go to her African dance performance. This topic was obviously handled better in 2017 than it was in the 90s. After the second mid-year item release for a girl of the year, their whole org collection will become available. This included every item in the dolls collection and all of their books bundled with a discount. Krissa and Lainey did not receive a whole org collection and no doll after Kanani has received one. However, a lot of the dolls after Kanani did receive some sort of bundled collection, however it did not include every single item in their collection. History Mysteries were a book series published from 1999 to 2004. There were 22 standalone novels set in different time periods and locations. This series covered a broad range of historical events that could not be covered in the limited expanse of the historical line. Everyone's favorite doll to hate, Tinny Grant, was allegedly intended to be the Girl of the Year in 2017. It has long been suspected that Tinny was originally intended to be Girl of the Year, largely because her, her collection is larger and more expansive than the actual Girl of the Year Gabriella, as well as having a companion doll, something that had been done only once before in the Girl of the Year line with Krissa and would be repeated five years later with Corinne. The real Girl of the Year 2017, Gabriella had a small collection compared to other Girl of the Year dolls, and fans were quick to notice that she was actually a retired Just Like You doll that AG recycled to be the Girl of the Year. The move to quickly put together a different Girl of the Year instead of Tinny was likely because of the backlash American Girl knew they would receive for releasing another White Girl of the Year when the last non-White Girl of the Year was Kanani six years before. A Tinny movie that was allegedly in production and never released also led fans to believe that she was the doll meant to be Girl of the Year. This is a widely known controversy even outside of the fandom and continues to be memed on and talked about to this day. In 2005, American Girl released the second doll in the best friend's line, Elizabeth Cole, Felicity's best friend. The doll had blonde hair, blue eyes, and had pen curls like Felicity did. However, this design did not match how she was originally described in the books. In additions and reprints to 2005, she is described as having dark hair and large brown eyes. This change was li likely because Katie Henney, who plays Elizabeth in Felicity and American Girl Adventure, has blonde hair and blue eyes. After the release of the movie and the doll, this became a permanent change to all editions and reprints of the books going forward. Throughout the 2010s, American Girl released many mobile games revolving around Girl of the Year and historical characters. These include Shave Ice, Secret Wardrobe, Port to Port, Paint Ponies, Isabelle's Dance Studio, Grace's Sweet Shop, Mary Ellen's TV Console, Mary Ellen's Rocket Rally, Leah Born for Adventure, and Welly Wisher's Garden Fun. After 2017, American Girl stopped releasing apps for new characters. In 2018, American Girl released the new Girl of the Year, Luciana Vega. Luciana likes space, and in her book, she goes to space camp after winning an essay contest. In 2020, astronomer Lucianne Walkovich sued American Girl, claiming they used their image and identity without permission for the Luciana doll. The basis of this claim was that the doll had similar hairstyle, including the same purple streak, and wears extremely similar clothes. The suit was settled in 2021, and the details of the settlement were not publicly shared. 
American Girl Live was a stage show that ran from December 13th, 2018 to May 19th, 2019. It was based around a group of girls telling stories at Camp American Girl and featured songs based around the stories of Rebecca, Nenea, Mary Ellen, Melody, Julie, and Luciana. It was the first American Girl stage show to feature a contemporary character. The American Girl Live official website domain name is apparently not owned by American Girl anymore and sent you to this Indonesian gambling site. There were also two different American Girl stage shows before this, American Girl Review, which ran from 1998 to 2001, and Circle of French, which ran from 2001 to 2008. As you have probably noticed at this point, a lot of controversies happened during the 2017 to 2018 era of American Girl. When the first boy doll, Logan Everett, was released, the first thing people noticed was that he had the Kaya face mold. This was controversial because of the cultural significance of this face mold. The Kaya face mold was designed with a closed mouth because in Namiapu culture, bearing teeth shows aggression and is considered disrespectful. Using this mold on a white boy doll not only removes the cultural significance as well as perpetuates the stereotype of Native American women being masculine. Logan was retired in 2018 and the Kaya face mold has not been used on any new doll since. Felicity's two runs in the historical line, she's had three different meat outfits. When she was first released in 1991, she came in what was later be known as her Rose Garden gown. When she was revamped in 2005 for the release of her movie and her best friend Elizabeth Cole, her meat outfit was changed to her traveling gown. Her Rose Garden gown was available for a brief time after this before being retired. Her traveling gown remained her meat outfit until her retirement in 2011. When Felicity was brought out of retirement in 2017, she came in a blue and yellow gown with designs of flowers and vines woven on it. She was archived again in 2019 and was available wearing her Rose Garden gown in 2021 for American Girl's 35th anniversary. For some reason, American Girl is actually a very prominent toy brand in the Middle East, specifically the United Arab Emirates. An American Girl store opened in Dubai in 2017. There is also another store in the UAE somewhere, however, I cannot find a location for that one. The Girls in Many Lands were a line of eight books and display dolls that were available from 2002 to 2005. These stories covered different historical periods and countries around the world. These characters in this line were Isabel Campion in Tudor era England, Cecile Ravel in France during the last few years of King Louis XIV's reign, Layla from Tulip period Turkey, Saba from Ethiopia during the Age of Judges, Chow Spring Pearl in China during the Second Opium War, Minook during the arrival of Christian missionaries in Alaska, Kathleen Murphy in Ireland during the Global Great Depression, and Neela Sin in British-occupied India in the 1930s. The age demographic for this line was a little higher than that of the main American Girl lines at ages 10+. plus. Because of this, the books were a little more mature and the dolls were display dolls and came with doll stands. Unlike the main American Girl lines that all sold for a standard price, the Girls of Mini Lands ranged from $48 to $54. You could also buy a display case or a display shell for them. I couldn't really find any information on this, so... This is a popular headcanon within the fandom, as said in this Tumblr post by a star green fan. A lot of the tasks she hates, like penmanship, stitching, and cooking, are not only stereotypically feminine, but at the time took an extraordinary amount of work. She hyperfixates on Penny, a horse she knows is being abused and therefore thinks she should own. She draws horses, getting distracted during riding practice, and her mother calls her fidgety and impatient. A Goodreads review of Me Felicity reads, Studying special education gave me a new perspective on the book. Could Felicity have ADHD? At the end of one chapter, her mother scolds her about how she has to leave other people's horses alone. Let's see my impatient, headstrong Lissy. You have not the patience to sew a seam on properly, you leave your writing practice half done, you lead your sister and brother into dangerous places and never stop to think. A willful girl on a willful horse is more than one family can handle. Between 1994 and 2007, Plus and Company produced a variety of trading cards for the historical characters. In 1994, a set of 60 cards were released for Samantha, Kirsten, Molly, Felicity, and Addie. A set for Josefina was released in 1998, along with sets for Samantha and Addie with their updated official illustrations. The 1998 Samantha and Addie cards tend to be rarer than their 1994 counterparts. In 2000, a 30-card set was released for Kit, followed by another 10 cards in 2001. When Kaya was released in 2002, she got a set that consists of 31 
cards and 5 stickers. All of the other historical characters got a set of 17 cards and 3 stickers at this time. In 2004, a set of 10 cards was released for Nellie along with an additional card for Samantha. Upon Elizabeth's release in 2005, she got 10 cards and Felicity got 12 new ones. Emily got 10 cards in 2006 and Molly got 10 new ones. Despite all the other best friend dolls getting cards upon their release, Ivy did not get any with her release. In 2007, with Jutley's release, she got a 25 card set, as well as Kaya receiving 31 and each other historical character once again getting 17. In 2009, with Rebecca's release, she got 31 cards at the same year, Julie got 25, Kaya got 31, and Kirsten, Molly, Felicity, Addy, Josefina, and Kit got 17. The rarest of these cards is Kit's 2001 series, followed by Kit's 2000 series, and Samantha and Addy's 1998 series. No historical dolls released after 2010 had trading cards. The America Girl Fashion Shows were hosted by charities and nonprofits to raise money for children's causes between 1992 and 2016. The fashion shows included a meal and their ticket price and included the following services. Bookstore in which local booksellers had American Girl books for sale. Photo studio where children and their dolls could take photos. Hair salon, mini stores, some American Girl items were for sale, including fashion show exclusives. Some of the exclusive items in the store included the fashion show's t-shirt and cap, tea and skirt, capri outfit, various different releases of accessories, glitter shoes, beret, tote, treat set, paper dolls, and many other items. Raffles slash door prizes were also available, often including a doll. Themes of these fashion shows included historical characters, modern outfits, girl of the year, bitty baby, and bitty twins. Models were accompanied by a provided doll in a matching outfit. The show ran for two hours with an intermission. At the end, the goodie bags were given with extras from sponsors. In 2007 and 2008, American Girl partnered with THQ to develop and publish five video games. Three of these games, Mia Goes for Great, Julie Saves the Eagles, and A Treehouse of My Own, were released for the PC via CD-ROM. Mia Goes for Great was released in February 2008, followed by A Treehouse of My Own in June 2008, and Julie Saves the Eagles in October of the same year. America Girl and THQ also made two games for Nintendo DS in collaboration with Webfoot Technologies. These games were Julie Finds a Way, released in December 2007, and Kit's Mystery Challenge, released in June 2008. Kit and Ruthie, but more specifically Kit, being lesbians, is a common headcanon and at this point a running meme in the American Girl fandom. It's in people's usernames, people write blog posts about her being a gay icon, and make lesbian Kit memes every other day. I'm just going to leave you with this excerpt from the article American Girl Dolls Ranked in Order of Gayness, published on July 9th, 2018, in which Kit was obviously ranked first. I truly think Kit Kitteridge was the single most decisive actor in me growing up to be a bi-ginger lesbian socialist writer. In many ways, I'm essentially just modeling my life after Kit Kitteridge, and I could only hope to embody her tenacious gay spirit in everything I do. I'm going to try to persuade American girls to let me write a book about Kit as a gay communist journalist working at the height of McCarthyism along with her gay communist girlfriend Hollywood actress Ruthie Smithens, and if they don't let me, I'll just AO3 it. C. Yang was a doll released in 2017 as part of the short-lived contemporary line and was subsequently retired in 2018. However, prior to her release, she starred in a series called Z Crew on the America Girl YouTube channel, where she was played by a Just Like You 40 doll before her own doll was released. The show originally showed kids how to make their own stop-motion videos later, and later transitioned to showcasing American Girl characters through Z's vlogs. The Hopscotch Hill line was released in 2003 and retired in 2006. The dolls in this line were 16 inches tall, made from vinyl and plastic, and have ball-jointed knees and elbows. The characters and books in this line were aimed at an early elementary school audience, younger than the target audience of the main doll lines. This line also had the release of the first of the three American Girl Gwen dolls. Before Girl of the Year 2013, Sage, was released, a poll was conducted where kids could vote between three potential meat outfits for the Girl of the Year. The only evidence of this I could find is this picture from the American Girl Ultimate Visual Guide. In August 2009, there were American Girl Happy Meal toys available at McDonald's. The set consisted of paper books which, with a set of paper dolls and stickers. The characters that you could get were Kaya, Felicity, Josefina, Kirsten, Addie, Kit, Molly, or Julie, the nine historical characters available at the time. In June 2014, a set of Happy Meal toys themed around the Girl of the Year Isabel were available. The toys included four plastic Isabel mini dolls, two sets of paper dolls, a plastic sewing machine, and a pink hair extension. 
It has become quite common to see dolls for sale on eBay with prices of $500, $600, and sometimes even over $1,000. While some rare dolls to be expensive, there's literally no reason for a doll to cost as much. The Arna Baby line of dolls was first released in 1990 and retired in 1995 when it was replaced with the Bitty Baby, which is essentially the same thing. These were baby dolls and there were three different dolls available and they each cost $54 alone or $68 with the Arna Baby. They had slightly different shaped heads than the Bitty Babies, but the dolls were otherwise the same. Another controversy, surprising absolutely no one. In 2005, American Girl launched its I Can campaign, aimed to help girls tell the world they are capable of anything they set their minds to. As part of this campaign, you could buy the $1 bracelets that included pledge cards that declared, I can be myself, follow my dreams, and always do my best. I can reach for the stars, lend a hand to others, and be a good friend. I can make a difference. I promise to try. A percentage of the sales from these bracelets would go to the nonprofit Girls Inc. The organization states on their website, in partnership with schools and at Girls Inc. centers, we focus on the development of the whole girl. She learns to value herself, take risks, and discover and develop her inherent strengths. The combination of long-lasting mentoring relationships, a pro-girl environment, and evidence-based programming equips girls to navigate gender, economic, and social barriers and grow up healthy, educated, and independent. Informed by girls and their families, we also advocate for legislation and policies to increase opportunities and rights for all girls. Even though this is not the main focus of the group, the controversy here stems from the group's endorsement of abortion rights. During the campaign, American Girl pledged $50,000 to this group and an additional 70 cents for each bracelet sold to support. This started the usual circumstances of controversy. The company does something even slightly controversial, conservative moms throw a fit and boycott, the company loses an extremely small amount of money, and everybody forgets about it in a month. American Girl has evidently tried to bury this and make everyone forget about it to the point I couldn't even find any mention of the bracelets on the American Girl wiki, and when I googled it, the only two articles about the controversy that showed up it was originally launched, the dolls had white cloth bodies as the clothes in the time periods these dolls were from had high enough necklines, the bodies of the dolls couldn't be seen. In 1991, when Felicity was released, the clothes from her time period, the 1770s, had lower necklines than that of the existing dolls. For this reason, the dolls were switched to a cloth body that matched the skin tone of the dolls. White body dolls are considered rare and tend to be extremely expensive. Through my Google searches for any evidence of prototypes for sale, I ran into a lot of dead ends. Typing American Girl Prototype into eBay brought up a lot of Gots Romina dolls, which while being the doll American Girl dolls are based off of and that share the same face mold with, are still dolls in their own right and technically aren't American Girl prototypes. I did run across this post on AmericanGirlDollNews.com of a prototype of Julie's holiday dress on eBay. The eBay account this was on, to my knowledge and research, does not exist anymore because believe me, I looked to see if I could find any other prototypes on this account. This is a post from 2016, so I am not really surprised that it doesn't exist anymore. There's also another post on this of a prototype of Julie's meat sweater from her Be Forever redesign. I also found this YouTube playlist called American Girl Prototypes. It has 66 videos, all displaying various alleged prototypes. Some of these are actually just different GOTS dolls that were inspiration for different American Girl dolls. I will leave a link to the playlist in the description for you guys to check out. This playlist is actually a mixture of American Girl and GOTS dolls, but all the titles are kind of confusing and just seem to be a long string of words. But this playlist is interesting if you are interested in older American Girl and GOTS dolls. The videos from this playlist I wanted to bring up are the videos of eBay listings for various American Girl prototypes and Goths dolls. Here is one that is a Goths doll from 1989 that looks like a bitty baby with hair. Now I, I don't mean a bitty when I mean a bitty baby with hair. There are a couple dolls on this playlist like this. Um, here's another one that looks a lot like a bitty twin. Well the dolls in this playlist much like Romina, are not technically American Girl prototypes. They are various Gots dolls that American Girl took a lot of inspiration from and used face molds from to make the various American Girl lines. This is more of just a fact than some of the other things on the star. Addie's full name is Aduke, and Addie's is a nickname. She is named after her great-grandmother. Aduke means much loved in Yoruba, which is a Nigerian language. Addie's cowrie shell necklace that is included in the accessories of all iterations of the doll was handed down from this great-grandmother.
The first line of mini dolls released in 1995 as accessories for the American Girl of Today dolls had glass eyes. Felicity, Kirsten, Addie, Samantha, Josefina, and Molly were available. This version of the dolls were retired in 2000 after Mattel's purchase of American Girl. The dolls were then modified to have painted on eyes. Maybe I'm just doing something wrong, but I literally couldn't find anything about this anywhere. After finding nothing on Google, I scoured Tumblr and yet nothing. Initial prototypes of Mia, the girl of the year for 2008, were shown to have dark skin and hair, and an early prototype of the Sonali mold. One had wavy hair, and the other had straight hair. The dolls were also wearing a prototype of Mia's performance outfit. This is obviously very different from the final Mia doll, who has red hair, fair skin, and freckles. The initial idea for the appearance of the Mia doll was used for Chris's friend Sonali a year later. Initially, I wrote in this part of the script that I literally had no idea what this was referring to. I did find a couple posts about this, but um, I am very confused, very concerned. I don't know what even to put here because I said not to reblog this, but um, <laughs> I have no words. Apparently, this person was known for DMing people in the community really creepy things. This doesn't seem like it's a problem anymore. This, from what I can find, these posts date back to 2020. Why? <laughs> Just why? In 2015, American Girl faced criticism from, wait for it, 1 million moms. Again, for an article about an 11 year old girl's experience in foster care and about a charity called Comfort Cases that her father had founded to help foster kids. One million moms started blasting American Girl for having a picture of Amaya and her family in the article. In 2000, American Girl released their AG Mini Slime. It consisted of a light box or a luma room with a clear shield for the front and a small drawer for storage. Each set contained furniture, wallpapers, other small details. A room cost $178 and additional decor sets were $20. The line was retired in 2003 with speculation that the electrical wiring was defective and thus ended no it has been a very long time since I've read Christian books, and I remember almost nothing from them. I had a hard time finding the inaccuracies, um, specifically, were being mentioned by this. I will present you with this quote from Kirsten in the Sun on Tumblr. Kirsten's stories are an accurate and appropriate portrayal of colonization, where they could approve inaccuracy to the Lakota, moccasin is an Algonquin word, etc., and more detail about their lives, but they aren't white savior. While Kirsten's books are a good tool in teaching children about the spread of colonization in America and the encroachment of settlements on indigenous lands, they still tend to offer a very sanitized and whitewashed depiction of immigration in America in the 19th century. C. Yang was a doll released as part of the short-lived contemporary line in 2017 and was retired in 2018. Prior to the doll's release, she was the face of the Z Crew series on the American Girl YouTube channel. Her first name is Suzanne and Z is a nickname. Just Like You number 6 was part of the first set of American Girl of Today dolls released in 1995. She originally had black hair with bangs and brown eyes. In 1997, the doll was redesigned to have blonde hair with bangs and the lime green Felicity eyes. She was later retired in 2008. The original Just Like You number 6 with black hair is one of the rarest American Girl dolls and tends to sell for high prices on the secondhand market. In the early days of Pleasant Company, Pleasant Roland signed a number of early historical dolls. Signed Samantha, Kirsten, and Molly dolls are white body dolls, and each signed doll has a number as well. She also signed a number of Felicity and Addie dolls, but the original three have many more signed dolls and are much easier to find. I know I remember reading about this multiple times, however, I could not find any examples of this anywhere on the internet. I know I seen it, I just could not find it. Maybe I wasn't looking in the right place, but I, I know this is a thing that happened. I just cannot provide the proof for it, but I have seen this. In 2005, Marisol Luna was released as the Girl of the Year. She was a Latina from Chicago who moves into a suburb in her books. There was a passage in her book where her parents told her that her Pilsen neighborhood was dangerous and that there was no place for her to play. People who live in Pilsen found this inaccurate and brought this to American Girl's attention. The author of the book, Gary Soto, was so hurt by this controversy that he never wrote another piece of children's literature again. 
In Addy's historical accessories, a water gourd was included. In the 1990s, the gourd was made of an actual gourd and had a cork stopper. After a crop failure, it was changed to plastic and the cork was no longer included. In early Pleasant Company catalogs, this passage was written on the back. Deep in the basement of a small museum lies a tattered, water-stained doll trunk. Open the dusty lid and the long-ago childhood of some lucky young girl comes instantly to life. Tucked gently inside is a beautiful porcelain doll, dearly loved and much played with. Dressed in blue silk and surrounded by marvelous accessories, this doll and her tiny treasures were cherished possessions of their owner. Possession so special that they were put away until some faraway day when her own little girl could delight in them. I discovered this trunk by chance more than a year after I had begun working on the American Girls collection. It served as a powerful reminder of why I had begun the collection, and what I hoped it would accomplish. At an age when girls are old enough to read and still love to play, they need books and dolls that capture their imaginations. The stories in the American Girls collection come alive with beautiful dolls and period doll clothes. The doll accessories are replicas of real things found in times gone by. They are quality pieces, not plastic playthings, and are made for children over 8 years old to treasure. I hope that the American Girls collection will be dearly loved and well played with, and then passed down to other generations of girls tomorrow. A reminder that growing up in America is, has been, and can always be a a experience to treasure. Pleasant to Roland. This story, however, was false. The doll mentioned in this story was purchased for Sybil Hanks, who was born in 1908 by her parents and was named Nancy. The doll was kept in pristine condition and never played with before being donated to the Wisconsin Historical Society in 1966. The doll was placed in a water-stained trunk for this image to convey the image of a well-played-with doll. After selling American Girl, Pleasant Roland moved to Aurora, New York, and started to remodel the town with her own funds to make it more like its pre-industrial days. She promised the residents that this would help revive the town, but this was not received well at all. The residents felt like she was trying to make the town into a tourist attraction and was ignoring the actual history of the town. She actually completely gutted the mostly intact 1833 Aurora Inn and also almost demolished a 1929 store. In 2007, Rowland shut down the Aurora Foundation, sold the local home decor film Mackenzie Childs, and purchased an additional building in the village to set up a limited liability corporation to operate her properties. In 2013, Rowland took ownership of all the properties she renovated in the town and purchased several other properties. She currently owns basically the entire village business district in Aurora and many other commercial properties within this town. I couldn't find much information on this bookline. In the early 2000s, American Girl released a bookline called AG Fiction for Older Girls. This line was very short-lived. I couldn't find much info online, and American Girl wiki articles were mostly incomplete. The only timeline inaccuracies I could specifically find was Molly listening to a radio show in 1943 that didn't exist in 1945, but this also was specifically in a movie. I wish I could find more examples of this, but I literally can't. Nenea Mitchell, the historical character from 1941, first name is actually Alice, and Nenea is her middle name. Valerie Tripp, the author of Felicity and Elizabeth's books, originally wanted Elizabeth to wear glasses. After research into this time period showed that glasses were rare to own in this era, especially for children, that was no longer included as a part of her character. In 2007, Addie and American Girl Story debuted at the Seattle Children's Theater, and it ran from April 13th to June 17th of that year. Later, a tour around the country was also made that went through 21 cities. Addie has been the only historical character to have a live-action play. Miss A.G. Bear was a teddy bear sold, sold by American Girl from 1994 to 1996. She was marketed as the mascot of the American Girl magazine and as a part of the American Girl of Today line. She was a 16-inch tall, jointed stuffed bear and could be purchased with no clothing for $18. There were also eight outfits available that could be purchased separately or with the bear. They can be mistaken for American Girl Today outfits, but are too big to fit the dolls. The outfits included the Meet Miss A.G. Bear outfit, warm-up outfit, sailor suit, winter parka, Miss A.G. Bear Beachwear, Satin Holiday PJs, Miss A.G. Bear Slumber Shirt, and Soft and Shiny Outfit. The Miss A.G. Bear products did not contain grin pens like the rest of the American Girl of Today line because of federal toy safety regulations. 
It is a common headcanon in the fandom that Kirsten, the historical character from 1854, is autistic. I couldn't find any specifics, but I am going to include this Tumblr post I found while searching for this because I think the caption is really funny. This is another popular headcanon, and I could not find anything dissecting this theory. When Mattel bought Pleasant Company in 1998, many minor changes were made to the dolls. Later transition dolls, which are dolls manufactured in 2001 and 2002, have harder eyelashes and are shorter and plumper than Mattel dolls. Many of the dolls from this time period also have two signature defects, a gray cast to their vinyl and a hair that is lower quality and frizzes easily. Angelina Ballerina was a book series by Catherine Hollibird that was first published in 1983. The brand has had a product line through American Girl that was available between 2001 and 2004, and this line was targeted at young children. The line's licensing rights were acquired by Target in 2004 and thus stopped being available through American Girl. The American Girl tablet was released in 2016 and retired in 2018. It was produced through a collaboration with the company Navi. The tablet was a, was the signature American Girl Berry and White and came with came bundled with more than 70 apps and American Girl themed content and it had parental controls built in. It was a branded variant of the Navi SE tablet and Barbie, Fisher Price and Hot Wheels variants were also released. I once again couldn't find any concrete evidence or information about this, but I did find this article while searching, which is, um, while not related, is, uh, interesting. Amelia's Notebooks by Marissa Moss was first published in 1998. Excerpts from these books were in the America Girl magazine, and many products were released surrounding the books. Some items include messenger bag, cap, Amelia t-shirt, my life scrapbook, a card game, pens, and a lunchbox. Doll and kit was also available, including a 10-inch rag doll, two books, a stationery set, a friendship frame, pencil case, multicolor pen, markers, and a sheet of stickers. The website Amelia's Desktop was run by American Girl until 2005. The URL for this website now displays an error code. Once again, it has been a very, very long time since I have read any of the American Girl books, and I remember basically nothing, and through searching, I couldn't find any specific things about this. With a lot of the historical characters that were around during the Be Forever rebrand, there were a lot of changes that happened with the condensing of their books from a six book series to a two or three book series, so there are a lot of complicated canons and errors and that kind of thing. The first prototypes of the Kaya doll had the classic face mold. This was changed to a new face mold with a closed mouth because showing teeth was seen as disrespectful in her culture. I have talked about this multiple times already in this video. One incidence of this is the situation with Luciana that ended in a lawsuit, which I went into detail with earlier in this video. Um, Kira, the girl of the year 2021, is also allegedly loosely based on an actual girl from Australia. I could not figure out what this was about. <laughs> um, the only thing I could find was when I was searching for this was an actress who played Isabel being from somewhere called Hamilton. Maybe this was some just theory or maybe this was a miscommunication that someone picked up with and ran with, but I don't really know. This next section um, is things that weren't actually on the iceberg, that this iceberg actually predates that I think are worth mentioning, or they were things that I found while researching this video that weren't mentioned in the iceberg that I thought would be worth mentioning in this video. The Willy Wishers are known for having a myriad of defects, most notably their limbs um, falling off. Another defect that these dolls unfortunately have is that sometimes their eyes turn this pink purple color. This usually happens when you leave them in direct sunlight for extended periods of time um, and is similar to the silver eye defect in the 18 inch dolls. This first kind of became well known from these pictures of Gwen, the girl of the year 2022 Corinne's companion doll, with pink eyes from being in direct sunlight in an American Girl store display shelf. Fortunately, this is the only version I could find of it and it's this YouTube video. This sparked a lot of memes about Gwen having psychic powers, various different things. I'm gonna put a couple of Tumblr posts here on the screen about this that I think are really funny. 
June of 2022, a group of creators on HIG decided to band together to make posts against Pride Month. They each hosted a picture of a doll in a different color of the rainbow, captioned with Bible quotes condemning Pride. This situation had happened to a certain degree in years past, even sparking the account LGBT HIG to make this statement in 2020. However, at this time, the creators of these posts faced a lot of backlash from the majority of the HIG community, even enough to lead to an NBC article covering this episode incident. This led to many of the creators of these posts privating their account and in some cases deleting the posts, but not until after they were pretty much blacklisted within the community. In October of 2022, America Girl collaborated with The Wizarding World of Harry Potter to release a line of outfits and accessories inspired by the franchise. Due to J.K. Rowling's transphobic and just generally questionable behavior in recent years, this led to American Girl facing a ton of backlash. People were also upset that as Claudia Wells, the new historical character released not even two months prior to this, seemed to take a backseat to this collaboration and was almost never promoted by American Girl to the same extent that other new dolls, notably Courtney, two years prior, had gotten, even before the announcement of this Harry Potter collab. This also led to American Girl's comments on social media being flooded with criticism. In February of 2022, American Girl released the book Body Image as part of the Smart Girls Guide series. This book aimed to teach girls how to love yourself, live life to the fullest, and celebrate all kinds of bodies. This book went largely unnoticed by the general public until it was criticized by Fox. After this, it received a huge uptick of criticism for including pages that discussed gender identity. The aforementioned Fox headline specifically criticized the mention of puberty blockers in, in this book. One page titled Gender Joy discussed using clothes to express yourself and gender expression. If you want to read the full page, you can pause the video because I'm going to put it on the screen. The page that's caused the most controversy or outrage is this one, which I am also putting on the screen. At the top of the page, it says, Being transgender is not an illness or something to be ashamed of if you are questioning your gender identity or if if you already know for sure that you're trans or non-binary, talk with an adult you trust, like a parent or school counselor. That person can connect you with a specially trained doctor who can help you and your family decide what's best for your body. At first, you and your doctor might talk about wearing clothes and using the pronouns like he, she, or they that make you feel most like the true you. If you haven't gone through puberty yet, the doctors might offer medicine to delay your body's changes, giving you more time to think about your gender identity. One claim that many have made about this book is that telling kids to bypass their parents and talk to a school counselor or another Instead, the book itself very clearly states to talk to your parent and to talk to an adult you trust part is there because many kids can't talk to their parents about this and still get access to the care they need. This section sparked many conservative moms to leave five paragraph essays in the comments of American Girls Facebook and Instagram full of bigotry and medical misinformation stating that they are boycotting the company unless the book is removed from sale. Many others have responded to this backlash praising American Girl for their inclusivity. The girl of the year for 2021 was Kira Bailey, a 10-year-old girl who travels to Australia to help with the wildlife sanctuary that her family owns. The wildlife sanctuary is headed by her great aunts, Mamie and Lynette. The inclusion of her gay aunts in this story caused backlash from conservative moms and led 1 million moms to boycotting American Girl again. During her early development, the 1910s historical doll, Rebecca, was originally going to be named Tasha. This was likely scrapped and changed to Rebecca due to the Christian association of the name Tasha, because the name Tasha is a diminutive of Natasha, which is a diminutive of the name Natalia, that means Christmas. There is evidence of this change in the Amazon listing for Rebecca's sixth book, Changes for Rebecca, in which she is called Tasha once in the synopsis. During the development of the 1920s historical doll, she was originally going to be named Estelle and had an interest in archaeology. Thus, the 1920s story would have surrounded the increase in archaeological digs and discoveries in Egypt during this time period. Glorifying this specific topic could have caused a lot of backlash to American Girl, largely because of the grave robbing of ancient Egyptian tombs that was happening a lot during this period. At some point in the development of the 1920s doll, she was changed to discuss the Harlem Renaissance instead, and her name was changed to Claudie. Claudie's last name was also originally supposed to be Jones, but was later changed to Wells before her official release. On January 3rd, 2023, Dolly Dreaming, the main Instagram account that has been vocal against American Girl, made another post against American Girl. She had already posted during the main backlash, but this seemingly came out of nowhere as the main uproar had ended at this point. The post was a screenshot of the Ski Sip Slay repeat 
post from American Girl's Instagram account, along with edited underneath it, Dolly Dreaming's comment on the post reading Speak Out, Stand, Share, Repeat, hashtag no new AG dolls, and a speech bubble to make the doll say the same. The post had a long caption condemning American Girl and promoted a faith-based doll company accompanied with the hashtag no new AG dolls hashtag. This had obviously sparked a lot of backlash, leading her to turn off the comments on the post. Many AGIG accounts called her out in stories and in posts. The next day after this happened, the Instagram account made a post condemning Dolly Dreaming's post with a caption stating, It's a shame to learn 100 of you follow this hate speech being spoken by this person. I'm also shocked to learn Nook Dolls is anti-LGBTQ and anti-trans. Hashtag support trans kids. Hashtag AGIG. We've now reached the end of this video, and I'm just going to show you some additional prototypes that weren't brought up in this iceberg because there is a lot of them. Three initial prototypes of Mary Ellen's meat outfits. There's this prototype of the cover of Kit's book that has a prototype of her meat outfit on it. The doll Felicity, um, the 1770s doll, was originally going to be named Lucy, and here is an initial prototype sketch of what that would have looked like. These are some prototype illustrations from Yvette's book in which she has brown hair. This was eventually changed to like a dark blonde color instead of brown. There is a prototype of the Tenny doll who looks a million times better than the actual doll we got and I am mad that they did not go with this one. Here is a prototype of Julie that was shown on the Oprah show for some reason. This is a prototype of Samantha with short blonde hair and there is the Addie's prototype meat dress which this was actually sold at early benefit sales so there is a non-zero amount of them out there in the secondhand market. By the time I finished this video script the script was 26 Seven pages long. I've been working on this for over a year, so if there is anything I missed or got wrong in this video, please feel free to tell me in the comments. Um, this video I originally planned to have come out in March, but that obviously didn't happen. Well, March of 2022. By the time you're seeing this, it may very well be March of 2023. Hopefully it isn't that late. So, if you want to see more of this style of content, let me know, because there is a lot of things in this video I could make full videos just on that topic and go into a lot more depth about. Just let me know in the comments, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.